Uh, welcome everybody to the J7 uh, Lime Street Conversations today. We've got a slightly different theme today. We're talking tennis and it's with great pleasure that I've got with me uh, the Spina Papa Michael, who is one of the top uh, players in the world in tennis. She's in the top 200, one of the uh, leading lights of Greek uh, women's tennis in the last recent years. Uh, the Spina uh, is now currently in Austin in Texas and uh, um, I wanted to ask Despina the first question is, you know, you know, tell us a bit about your current uh, career, where, where you're at, and just to give an idea of the people. Now we're watching the the Pitkova, the, the, the tiebreaker match. So Despina, um, over to you. Let me know, you know, tell us about your, you know, your, your career and your ambitions at the moment. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I am now playing some tournaments in America. I'm ranked currently 260 in the world, and our goal is definitely to play the Grand Slam, the qualifications, uh, and first, and then to be able to get to the main draw. So for that, we need uh, some points, some few spots in the WTA rankings to be around 230. So I'm really missing some spots to be able to to play in the big tournaments and then uh, make the the big step. Okay, so I mean the question that I wanted to kind of ask you is, um, you know, you're now in the top 250. Um, tell us a bit about the challenges that you face, uh, especially with the COVID crisis. What impact has COVID had on? Uh, women's tennis uh, on you know the WTA side of things and how are you dealing with the crisis with the pandemic? Yeah I mean it was a really strange situation I mean worldwide uh, many people got affected financially and they even lost their lives but uh, to us it was a big problem because we we didn't have tournaments for so long Mm -hmm. And then once uh, we were able to have tournaments, the, there were no sponsors to basically make the tournaments happen. So we also US Open and uh, now we're seeing Australian Open, but those are the big tournaments because the sponsors are going for the big tournaments. And however, they are not investing money in the lower tournaments. So mm -hmm. we basically don't have tournaments to play and we, we can't... Uh, we can't climb their, their rankings if we have no tournaments to play. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, and also, um, the question I wanted to, to kind of ask you is also the, um, uh, you went to Abu Dhabi and we're watching the tiebreaker with Pliskova. I think it was the first time that three Greek women uh, managed to play a uh, WTA event uh, at the same time. I think it's one of the first occasions. So, what you know? What's happening with Greek tennis? Because everyone's talking about Stefanos Tsitsipas and Maria Sakkari. Has that had an effect on you know on you? Does that encourage you? You know, tell us a bit more about what was happening uh, in terms of tennis in Greece. Yeah, it was the first time in the history, actually. I mean, you know, when when you never had players before in such a in a small country with no tradition in tennis, then people are growing up without really believing that uh, they can do it because no one ever have done it before. So we lack uh, facilities, we lack experience of the coaches and ambition basically because it's different when you are from a country like Spain where you have Nadal and you have eight, ten players in the top hundred. So you, you see them, you practice with them, uh, they, you know you can do it. And it's different when you are from a country where no one... I mean, not many players have done it, so you you think it's a it's a really difficult to do it, and even if you are close, you 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 can't believe that you you know it doesn't feel close. And now we saw Maria doing it, we saw Stefano doing it, so people believe more, people are practicing more, people are are checking internet videos and are uh, want to improve and to do it better. So I think that had a big impact uh, on us and on the younger players as well. Mm. Do you think, I mean, you know, there's always a debate in the UK about the role of the Lawn Tennis Association, the federation that governs British tennis. How important are federations in, in promoting, getting players, 
you know, uh, progressing players to see players do well in tennis. What's the, you know, what do you think there? What's your views? I think federation is a, is a very important uh, thing. I mean, they could help way more than they do. They are working a bit for me like politicians, you know. They don't really help the, the country, the players, you know. Mm. I think uh, Italy has done a great job lately. That's why, that's why they have uh, very, uh, many players, guys players, because they, they invested on tournaments to make tournaments, you know, instead of just helping two or three or four players. They are, they are making many tournaments, so the, the players have the opportunity to play in their country without spending much, and they are able to play every week. So the more tournaments you play, the, the more opportunities you have to make better. And they help on that, and they help as well on the players getting the money with their own coaches, not with the coaches of the federation. So yeah. this, is, this helps as well. You can't just... You, you cannot expect a player to do well and to help them, but by your own, uh, your own if you want to do them to do it your way, you know, to practice on the federation and to play what you say. The mm. players need to have their codes that they grew up with or their, the codes that they believe they can do well and have many tournaments to play. And rather than that, the federation only needs to support, not just judge and uh, if you do well we pay you if not then we choose someone else because we already face many many difficulties in this sport so your federation needs to be a help okay so we're watching the tie break against Pliskova in um, Abu Dhabi can you run me through the situation because uh, you're four is it six four now but tell me I mean you know you were close I mean what you know what opportunities did you have there to close out the match, you know, what things did you learn from that com that competition? You know, what is it you've taken away as a as a professional tennis player? You know, what is it that you've gained from this experience? Yeah, the most important thing was that uh, the level is not so far. You know, uh, Pliskova was number one of the world. She's now six of the world, and uh, in the second set it was a, a tiebreak, and I was really close. I was 3 all. I had advantage to break her. I mean, with these players, you only have one chance if you don't take it, it's tough. But still, yeah. I, I got um, the positive thing that I'm, I'm really close to that level. So if I, if I can play it more, they will, there will come a time that I will close the sets there and I, I can take yeah. it. So what's the plan for you now? So you're, you're now in Austin in Texas. What is it that you're doing in the next three to six months? What are you planning in terms of competitions, in terms of your own career? Um, you know, when are we going to see you in um, in the UK? Are we, are we likely to see you here in the future? Yeah, I mean, I, we will now play two more tournaments in Florida. We will stay in the States. And then there are some WTAs um, in uh, Dubai. There is in St. Petersburg. Uh, we will see where I can get in because the goal is to play high tournaments to to get to the level to play with good players and get some good wins. And yeah, the goal is basically to play as many tournaments as possible because we don't really know what's going to happen again with the pandemic. And now that we can to to play many of them. And uh, fortunately, I can come to the UK and get to know you guys from close. Well, you know, J7 is, uh, you know, ready for you. We are uh, actively supporting your career. We want to do more to support you. And everyone who's watching us today, you know, we are committed to Spina and her career. Uh, and we want to see you reach, uh, at le you know, the top 100 very, very soon. So we're not, you know, we're putting everything in our powers to, for that to happen. The, um, the next thing I wanted to find out from you is, if you're a young player, if you're like a teenager and you're beginning to, to, to get really into tennis, you know, what, what tip do you give to a young player who is competing to progress? What are the things that you would do better or, or you know, what, what things can you do, uh, you know, kind of help explain to people what, what they need to do to progress in tennis if they're quite young? Yeah, I mean, I think the basic thing is to uh, to enjoy, to like the sport, because there are many difficulties. You travel alone, it's very hard. So 
you really need to like it and to be able to suffer in order to do it. And uh, once you are committed on that, I think the most important thing is uh, to focus on yourself. Because there are many people, there are many other players, different type of players, different kind of tournaments. You can lose to the same player, then the next day in another surface you can beat them. So you need to focus on yourself and not thinking on the results and, or on the others, if they're going um, faster up in the rankings or if they're uh, not going up. You need to focus only on yourself and your process, you know. To improve mm -hmm. day by day, day by day. Tennis is a very demanding sport. Uh, you need to be good uh, in fitness, in tennis, mentally. So you have so many things to take care of that if you lose the focus and focus on something else, you will lose time and it's it's this not going to help you. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've got a problem in the UK at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if you know, we're, we're not allowed even to play on outdoor tennis courts. Uh, the indoor tennis courts are all closed. They're only open for elite training. So we're not, we can't do any coaching on it or, or, or anything but for for those people watching you now what things can you do from home to help you know your tennis you know what what tips would you give somebody a young junior tennis player watching you now that they can keep doing you know what what exercises can they do to kind of keep active in tennis yeah you can always work on the fitness you can do some uh... Uh, roping, you can do many things, like there are many exercises you can do at home, some skipping, to be active, you can watch videos of players, you can analyze your shots, you can work mentally, there, there are really many things. I think, I always think if you want to achieve something, you, you can find a way. I understand it's very difficult now, you can't play and some people can play in other countries and they have advantage, but it's up to you to, to see the positive or the negative side, because you can see the positive side and try to practice home as much as, as much as you can and then when you're back your level will, will be better or you can just be negative and don't do anything which is not going to help at all so it all mm -hmm. depends on the perspective you're looking at it okay so um just to close despina in terms of um your own ambitions what you know what are you trying to achieve in the next year you know two years of your career what do you want to do um in your career what is it that really drives you to go on the tennis court and train and and practice um tell me yeah i mean i'm, I'm really i love tennis i i want to be a top 100 player i think the important steps are now from this ranking to 60 to get into the 150 because there are not many tournaments and uh, the final the not financially, it's not uh, rentable. So I think once I can get there, which is the goal in the next two years, uh, then I think I can even do better than just top 100. Yeah. So uh, we need to push now to stay focused and yeah. uh, big things are going to come. Well, l listen, I am 100% convinced that you will achieve it. You need, you know, to, to be focused on the positive stuff. It's, a, you know, for those people who don't know tennis, it's a very difficult sport. It's a gladiatorial sport. You know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, and and you and you have to keep learning. You've got to keep developing and believe in yourself. And you know, uh, seeing you, Despina, I know that you've got everything inside of you—the ability, the belief to do the the you know the best things in tennis. So um, I'm going to close here. Um, have a great time in the United States. Um, we look forward to seeing you back in Europe as soon as possible. And um, and uh, uh, J7 will keep everyone updated on your career and we'll try and support you as best as we can. Thank you very much. Okay, this has been a Cheers. Okay, take care. All right. Bye.